This video is sponsored by Manscaped. Do you hear that? Christmas is here a little early and I just got gifted the new performance package by Manscaped, the world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit. I'm not gonna lie, when I was young I tried grooming myself one night and it wasn't fun at all. I had bumps, bruises, cuts, anything that should not have been there was there. For that reason, my favorite out of all of these useful items has to be the Lawnmower 4.0. It's a waterproof cordless trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, meaning less cuts or nicks in sensitive areas. They even have this cool LED light which can be really helpful for grooming on those cold, dark winter nights. Next we have a two-piece combo. The Crop Preserver, a ball deodorant, and the Crop Reviver, a ball toner spray that has a real subtle and earthy smell to it. It's nice. A new addition to the collection is the Weed Whacker, a nose and ear hair trimmer, and finally the Shears 2.0, a luxury 6-piece stainless steel nail kit. And for a limited time, you'll also get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Look, if you ask me, these are some real useful gifts, stuff that you will actually use and will make your life that much easier. So don't wait. Go to manscaped.com and use my promo code SAGE to get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts. Obito and Kakashi were once teammates, friends even, and on their way to becoming brothers, until Obito witnessed an event that would change their relationship forever. Before Obito and Kakashi's iconic fight, let's look at their past. Obito and Kakashi are parallels to Naruto and Sasuke. Obito was a young leaf shinobi who was determined and pure of heart. Not yet tainted by tragedy and loss, Obito's goal was to become Hokage, just like Naruto after him. For whatever ability he lacked, he made up for it with heart and will, with charisma and passion for helping others, especially helping his team, who became like his family after a while. Kakashi, on the other hand, was like Sasuke, an incredibly talented shinobi and a lone wolf, as he lost his father when he was young and his mother's never mentioned. Like Naruto and Sasuke, they had a bitter relationship to begin with, but would later earn each other's respect on the battlefield taking turns to protect each other when the time called for it, thereby solidifying their friendship. However, this friendship would be short-lived because Obito would get his body crushed by falling rocks during one of their missions. As a parting gift, Obito gifted Kakashi the Sharingan of his left eye. However, Madara Uchiha would retrieve and nurse Obito back to health. So, when Obito became eager to return to the leaf and to see his friends, he instead saw Kakashi impaling Rin with a lightning blade, directly through her heart, changing his perspective towards the world forever. After years apart, Obito's reality became a nightmare. The shinobi world failed him time and time again. Obito began his life without his biological family, and now he was without his found family. And so, he searched for a new world. With Madara in his corner, it led to his declaration of war that would eventually lead him to a Genjutsu world, one without conflict. Kakashi knew, to shift the war in their favor, he had to kill him, he says, to protect the Obito of the past. And this fight told the story of two teammates, two brothers. Without extra words, Kakashi and Obito go at it. And this fight highlighted the genius of the show's early days. Its greatest success seemed to be in its simplicity. The two mostly used taijutsu and add-on ninjutsu when needed. Using early tactics like substitution jutsu, shuriken, and kunai, they interacted with their own environment and their jutsu as Obito smashed Kakashi's head into his own mud wall. This fight was a breath of fresh air compared to the immense power creep that happened throughout the show. Adding on to the intense emotional weight that the two already carried, this aspect being added gave the fight intimacy, and kept it shrouded in that sentimentality. And through the flashbacks, we see how Obito has progressed as a shinobi. From practicing the great fireball by the river alone, Obito was now able to not only perform one-handed jutsu, but he had the presence of mind to use Kakashi's hand to perform that jutsu. His fireball was greater in size, and he began to match Kakashi skill for skill. This fight was a masterclass in animation and choreography, 
The cuts were well placed, the animation was crisp, and above all, everything flowed seamlessly. Actions were not wasted, as two elite level shinobi should be. Along with Obito's improvements, this fight demonstrated that what Kakashi lacked in genetic advantages, he made up for it with sheer skill and intelligence. As the fight kept flashing back to their younger days, it tells the story of these two shinobi. This was a battle that Kakashi and Obito probably had dozens of times in their time training, but this time it was a fight to the death. The setting complements this idea, it's perfect just like the score. The fight begins without it, and all that's heard is their footsteps which demonstrates the isolation in this dimension. That silence with the desolate score carefully entering the scene and amplifying the present feeling of emptiness they've created, it's not too overbearing, but it's just right as it elevates the story of two people who were once friends, best friends. It's a battle of wills, of resolve. Who is willing to break away from all the history that they've shared? Who is willing to put it behind them, for what's dear to them? The song playing in the background is called Scene of a Disaster, and I think that's rather fitting, because at the end of this battle, they won't be celebrating. It won't be joy that they will feel after this. Not after all they've endured together. And realizing this makes the battle tragic. Kakashi and Obito are a part of each other, no matter what happens. And so it truly is the scene of a disaster. It's why they're silent. The entire fight was the talking. It was a discussion, a dialogue. The flashbacks were as well. As shinobi, words were never their strong suits. This fight was Kakashi gauging how much of Obito of the past is left, and if he can pull him back up. Bring him back up to earth, to reality. But he can't. Obito can't come back to reality because for him, Reality is nothing but a nightmare. Hell, as he calls it. This world, this reality, all the people in it have done nothing but break Obito. But with Madara, this is his way out. Kakashi and Obito are foils in that regard as well. As the world has broken Obito, it has also broken Kakashi. Just like Naruto and Sasuke. And though Obito's life began like Naruto's, the path that he followed was more similar to Sasuke's. Based on the world around them and based on outside influences, Madara, Orochimaru, and Itachi, the two walked alone, and that path was manipulated. Kakashi's life, on the other hand, began like Sasuke's, having everyone close to him taken away. He instead was supported by his village, by his mentor, by his teachers. He wasn't swayed by the evils of the shinobi world. And it's even more tragic because if there's anyone in that world that can empathize with Obito, it's Kakashi. They should be even closer because of what they suffered. But the most telling moment of that fight is when the older Obito pulls the child version of himself away from the handshake. It emphasizes how everything has changed. The Uchiha might have considered who he was fighting and might have thought about joining his former best friend, but in order to reinforce his beliefs that he is in hell, and that he can find something better. He has to sever his younger self, pull himself away from the memories, so that he doesn't have any regrets or any sense of burden from his past, so that there's no guilt, no memories, no nostalgia. This is Obito ridding himself of the final memory of his friend. The story of Obito and Kakashi embodies tragedy, and this dimension embodies said tragedy, and their solitude in this world. The only two people who can truly understand what the other is going through, and they are trying to kill each other. Only Kakashi alone knows the true Obito, but he can't rely on Rin or Minato to help. It's up to him to bring his friend back to the light, the kid who was light itself, who wanted nothing more than to be Hokage. And I'm sure Kakashi only sees the younger version of Obito as they fight. We don't see Kakashi pull his former self back, but he did it. He realized that in order to protect Naruto and everybody else that he cares about, he needs to kill Obito. And for Obito, he's trying to sever the final bond to his former life. The one person who is alive and who lives in all of his memories. Kakashi.